grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Good morning. Good morning. I want to extend a welcome to newcomers who are with us today, to our members, to the friends of the church that are with us regularly, those who are gathered here in the sanctuary, and those of you who are following us through Facebook Live, wherever you are today. Thanks for joining us in this community of faith as we gather to worship. Uh, if you're here in person, if you'll find on your row of chairs the friendship pad and sign your name, we'd appreciate it. If you have a prayer concern or joy, the cards are in the top. If you'll write your name on the front and then the joy or concern on the back, we will collect those and add them to our list of concerns and joys to be prayed for. If you're at home, if you'll take a moment to check in with us, uh, like, love, comment, let us know that you're with us today. It always is a blessing to know that you're following along and participating with us, even at a distance. Hear this invitation. If you need a community to belong to, if you're thirsty for the word of life and want to live as a disciple of Jesus, join us in his ministry and mission. Friends, you are welcome here, you are needed here, and we are glad you're here at Celebration Presbyterian Church. Now at this time, I'm going to invite Rick Thornburg forward, uh, our liturgist, to get us started in worship. Confession. Compassionate God, the wind of your spirit is the very sign of life for all who long for you. One breath from you and we are rescued from the arid, dry, arid valley of dry bones, given muscles and sinews and joy with which to praise you and filled with the holy hope you grant to all your faithful children. Let our whole lives be filled with the life breath of the Spirit, that which has lain dormant may burst into bloom, and what looks to us to be death may be revealed as but sleep before the emergence of new life. Amen. Our opening prayer, opening hymn, oh, I'm struggling today here, number 285, like the murmur of the dove's song.
have a few announcements. Um, first, uh, Patrice Burkhart asked me to share with you that the Bible study for this Fall will meet on the first Saturday of each month starting uh, September 3rd. It's going to meet at 9.30 a.m. here at the church, and the book that will be used is Words of Life by Adam Hamilton, and it's looking at the Ten Commandments. If you're interested in attending, there's a sign-up sheet out in the narthex in the hallway, uh, and the cost of this book is $15.00. Uh, if you'll please see Patrice Burkhart, she can share a book with you as you're ready to participate. And she says thanks. So looking forward to that. Um, I invite you to save the dates for our 20th anniversary celebration weekend. It's going to be the middle of October, October 15 and 16. And if you have pictures of celebration gatherings through the years that you would be willing to write your name on the back of and share with our anniversary planning team, that would be very helpful. You can bring them to the church office and we will promise our best to try to keep track and get them back to you. I've mentioned our friendship pad and prayer cards. If you haven't already, please take a moment to fill those out now. I remind you of Tuesday Virtual Vespers. That's at 7.30 p.m. on Tuesday evenings. Um, our summer choir rehearsal, which is quickly drawing to an end, happens Sundays at 10 a.m. Our first fall rehearsal will begin Wednesday, August 24th at 7 p.m. Now that's a week from Wednesday. So we're, we're in the zone. If you'd love to come sing with us, we'd love to have you. Please keep donating staple food and personal care items throughout this year. We do have many neighbors in need here in Horry County, and we have a round collection bin in the narthex right in front of the water fountains and would be glad to receive your donations there. If you have prayer requests throughout the week, if you could uh, either phone in to Irma Stackhouse or email her, she will include your uh, concerns and joys in the prayer list on Tuesday, and we'll try do our best to get it included in the centerpiece, which is now in your bulletin like a bookmark. So if you have updates on anyone on our prayer list, if you'll please share that, we'll do our best to try to keep it current. Now I'd like to invite Robert Callender. He's going to come with a minute for permission. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Robert, Robert Callender. I'm a member of the Safety Committee. Uh, Annette Kelly is our chairman, along with uh, Terry Baker and Steve Redding. And she's cracking the whip to make sure that we live up to our <laughs> obligation to make this church <coughs> safe. This morning, we've handed out a No Your Zone publication of, I'm sorry, this is, uh, yeah, Horry County. There's a similar one for South Carolina. And we would encourage you to become familiar with all of these publications so that you know your evacuation zones and learn other vital information about hurricane preparedness. It's not a matter of uh, if, it's a matter of when. And given all of the events that we've seen on the news, these, these events have devastating consequences. We would like to be prepared to help ourselves, to help our church families and our community. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Now, if you will, prepare your hearts for confession. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But Jesus promises if we confess our sins, he is faithful to forgive us and to cleanse us from our unrighteousness. So let us confess our sins collectively with a unison prayer and then personally in a time of silence. Let's pray together. Forgive us, O oh God, when we see the world through rose-colored glasses rather than as it really is, much less the way you seek it to be. Forgive us, Holy One, when we forsake lively and risky faith 
calling us to be agents of change in our world for the bland conviction that all will be well. Renew us with your grace and ground us with your spirit that we might be empowered to live in word and deed as testimonies to the power of your love over the grave. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Friends, hear the good news and believe it. In Jesus Christ, we are fully known, fully loved, and fully forgiven. How good of God, and thanks be to God. Now I invite you to join me as we say what we believe, affirming our faith, sharing the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, we got young disciples scattered about. Can I meet y'all on the front row over there? Check, check.
That's right. That's a new recruit for the choir. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, as we come to our time of sharing prayer cards, I've already been handed a few. If you have not had a chance to hand yours in, if you'll raise them up, we'll gather them. And I will point to your flyer in your bulletin which gives you sort of our ongoing long list of concerns. And we've had a long list. So uh, please let that be a little prayer bookmark for you. And for today, we have these joys and concerns. Steve and Marcia Meek uh, ask prayer for Keith Lindell friend and neighbor as he prepares for a heart valve replacement surgery. Donna Woodard says prayers for healing for David Massacott. Okay. He has a melanoma on his back that is spreading. And Brawlier says, please pray for my cousin Alice Davis in Wilmington, Delaware. She was hit by a car while by walking across the street and fractured several bones in both legs and an ankle fracture. Speaking of bones, <laughs> sorry to hear about her accident. Robert Callender asked prayer for the family of Walter Lutkenhaus. Walter was a member of Robert's Vietnam Battalion and he passed away on August 4th. Rick and Nancy Thornburg ask prayers for Bernie Pettijohn as she's recovering from knee replacement, Glenn Daniels, who also had a knee replacement, and Linda Berry, our former administrator, who is recovering with a knee replacement as well, praying for quick healing and little pain while they get back to their normal lives. And then also from Rick and Nancy, prayers for safe travel for their family as they're returning from a two-week vacation in Michigan. Please bow with me, friends, and as we prepare our hearts, we're going to sing verses 1 and 2, seated where you are, breathe on me, breath of God, hymn number 286.
Friends, let's remember the family and friends of mass shooting victims, our friends in Ukraine, Belarus, Poland, and Russia. Um, we also want to remember the family of Jeff, Jeff Walsh. Everyone in the family has special need right now, so pray for them all. I uh, want to remember those who are still battling COVID and the healthcare workers who are helping to heal them and first responders. We want to lift up our congregation for our ongoing mission and ministry and pray for our preschool staff who are beginning to gather and prepare their rooms for the incoming students who will be with us shortly. Let's pray together. Gracious God, God of all compassion and consolation, your breath alone brings life to dry bones and weary souls. Pour out your spirit upon us that we may face despair and death with the hope of resurrection and faith through Christ our Lord. Help us to dance with the spirit, the breath of life which calls us out of the valley of dry bones and into the kingdom of God, which is both the present reality and the grounding of our future hope. Holy God, Father of Christ, who revealed the way of life, inscribe your law on our hearts that in this life we may be the body of Christ. Help our hands to hold the sick and suffering. Help our feet to walk with the poor. Help our ears to listen to those who live in despair. May our eyes be affixed upon your suffering on the cross and the hope of your empty tomb so that we may truly live as resurrection people. Sovereign Lord, Father of all in the power of the Spirit, you know our faults and yet you have promised to forgive. Keep us in your presence presence and give us your wisdom open our hearts to gladness call our dry bones to dance and restore to us the joy of our salvation we are here today O oh god asking for your healing mercies for people and situations that impact our lives we place our trust in your compassionate love Help us to gather peace, joy, justice, and hope as gifts to be shared freely and abundantly with all. Bring us again to your mercy and care, Lord. Continue to open our eyes to behold wonderful things in your word and in your world and guide us into all truth. Lord, give us an ever-deepening faith and a good measure of courage and strength to spend more time with you in daily prayer and devotion and help us daily to serve you with our hearts, minds, souls, and strength. In these challenging economic times in our world, we bring our financial needs to you, O oh God, and we entrust our personal provisions and the collective provisions for this, your church, and her ongoing ministry and mission to you and to the generous support of your people. May we be faithful stewards with all the gifts and resources that you entrust to our care and oversight. Show us your power and provision to meet our needs according to your loving kindness in Christ Jesus our Lord. Keep us faithful to you and trusting you for strength today and bright hope for tomorrow. Grant our leaders wisdom and vision to guide your people through these challenging and ongoing pandemic times. Bless everyone whose name and situation we have called out before you today for help, for healing, and for restoration of hope. Fill us with your love that overflows. Remind us that there's no greater calling than to love you with all that we have and all that we are and to love our neighbors and ourselves. Gracious God, show us signs of your kingdom emerging around us and draw us into the new things that the Bible tells us you are doing even now in the world around us. Thanks for leading and blessing celebration 
through our first 20 years of mission and ministry here in Myrtle Beach. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. And we join our voices praying as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen. Let us sing verses 3 and 4 of hymn 286. As we come to the time of giving our tithes and offerings, I remind you there are several ways to give. For those here in the sanctuary, we have a clear plexiglass offering receptacle. Looks like a glass box. It's there to receive your offerings. For those of you at home, you may drop a check by the church, mail a check into the church, go through your online banking and have it directed this way. Or you can simply go to our church website and use the Donate Now or Recurring Payment options that you'll find clearly marked on the home page. Now hear this invitation to the offering. And now, not because we have to, but because we can and because we are grateful, let us return to God a portion of what has been given to us to share. And let us joyfully offer our time, our treasure, our commitments, and our prayers.
now let me invite you to stand and join in our doxology. It's number 582. Glory to God whose goodness shines on me. <laughs> dedicate our offering. God, thank you for your love and grace, for this community of faith, and for the gifts of our lives. Bless these offerings we've given today that they might be used to further your reign of righteousness here and now. Work through each one of us and through the ministries of this congregation that we might glorify you in all that we do. In Christ's name, amen. Please be seated. Our scripture lesson for today comes from Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 to 14. And I invite us to prepare our hearts and minds to receive God's word with just a few moments of silence followed by the prayer for illumination. Let's bow in quiet. God of mercy, you promised never to break your covenants with us. Amid all the changing words of our generation, speak your eternal word that is changeless. Then may we respond to your gracious promises with faithful and obedient lives. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. A few thoughts on hope before we read God's word. Hope is not only a life and death matter. Hope is a life in death matter. Hope finds its greatest challenge and shines its greatest light when life stands in the face of death and affirms that God remains trustworthy. Now listen as we hear Ezekiel, who is called to prophesy such hope in a valley of dry bones and lost dreams. Hear the word of God. The hand of the Lord came upon me, Ezekiel says, and he brought me out by the spirit of the Lord, and he set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. And God said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin, 
and put breath in you, and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, as the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. <coughs> then God said to me, Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as God commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet a vast multitude. Then God said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live. And I will place you on your own soil. And then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now hear what the Spirit is saying to the church today as we consider hope in the valley of death or how dim bones going to rise again. Just imagine the scene that Ezekiel saw and has described for us readers about this amazing and transformative experience that was unfolding before his very eyes. Dust swirled in the air as the soldiers groaned and stretched and rubbed their eyes. Ezekiel was confounded. Just moments earlier, the same dust that now clouded the air had been piled up and undisturbed on the ground. A thick layer had covered bones that remained in the valley from some ancient battle long ago. The bones, it says, were old and dry. So much time had passed since they had been functioning parts of human bodies that there was no longer any evidence of flesh that had once covered them. From all outward appearances, no life and no hope resided in this desolate valley. But something amazing was happening. God was about to transform the valley and infuse it with new life. Ezekiel prophesied to the bones and to the breath as he was told. And then the Spirit of the Lord breathed new life into the dry bones and suddenly before Ezekiel stood a living army of men. They were alive, they were well, and they were ready to serve their maker. Each forgotten face, the strength in each ancient hand and leg and foot had been totally restored. For all those on our list who have had bone problems, back problems, knee problems, this is good news. God can bring all this back together. Ezekiel had been told and he now understood and believed that the Lord had great plans for the nation of Judah. It was hope out of despair and it represented new life out of what felt to them like death. You see, hope was rare during that era of Judah's history 
Ezekiel himself must have felt as desolate and useless as those piles of bones that had been strewn about before him in the valley. You see, the nation of Babylon had invaded and conquered the holy city of Jerusalem, almost destroying the nation of Judah. The strategy of the Babylonian army was simple and brilliant. If we'll deport and scatter the people that they have conquered, that way they can't regroup, gain strength, and retaliate. So communities were torn asunder. Families were separated from families. And even the temple had been laid waste. It was demoralizing and defeating for God's people to witness such destruction among their people and their beloved temple that was the heart of their religious gathering and worship. They saw that literally as the place of God. And as Ezekiel sat down on the banks of the Chibar River in Babylon, he must have pondered God's will for Judah. And he realized that only a miracle could bring together again the people who had been captured and scattered. Only the mighty working of the Lord could rebuild this devastated nation of God's people. Yet when God brought Ezekiel to Death Valley, the miracle of life was there before him to be witnessed. Where there once were only bones, the creative touch of the Lord added muscles and tendons and tissue. And into those restored but silent bodies, Ezekiel prophesied to the breath and the Lord provided it. New life breathed in by God. God was planning to do the same thing for Judah. God would take the spiritually dead, scattered nation, and by God's own might, bring Judah back together, make it whole, and breathe new life into it. An interesting twist in this story is that Ezekiel's name means God is strong. So God chooses a representative whose name speaks to the strength of God and said, I have work for you to do. God was using this life-giving lesson so Ezekiel could know the strength and power that the Lord was about to show to the nation of Judah. As Ezekiel watched the Lord's work in dismay, he heard the Lord's promise. I will put my spirit within you and you will come to life and I will place you on your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and done it, declares the Lord. In your own life, you may find yourself at times feeling disappointed, depressed, desperate, disheartened, scattered, disillusioned, or feeling as if the parts of you are lifeless and all dried up. Your valley of dry bones may represent a time of great loss in your life, the death of a loved one, a failed relationship, an illness that consumes you, or perhaps a life-threatening circumstance which is beyond your control. Troubles and trials will come throughout life and they'll seem impossible at the time to overcome. In those seasons of trial and tribulation, hope can be strained. It can be scarce. But Jesus says in John 16, in the world, you will have tribulation, but take courage for I have overcome the world. There is new life in the valley of dry bones. The same God who breathed new life into old dry bones with Ezekiel watching will sustain you and me. 
helping us to rise up from those seasons of sadness and despair. God is able to infuse each of us with new life and renewed hope, even in the valleys of the shadow of death that we encounter all along our way. Like Ezekiel's name, God is strong. God is able to make a new creation out of you and out of me and to restore our hopes and dreams. Consider where we were just over two years ago, wondering how we were going to get out of this mess. Will we ever get to go to church together again? Will it be safe to shake hands, to hug our loved ones, to share fellowship with friends and family? Well, we've seen God work in powerful ways. And God is strong and able to take our valleys of pain and defeat and fill them with victorious life, full of new opportunity and possibilities. We're still figuring out what that looks like as we work our way through this pandemic. Our new normal hasn't settled in quite yet. Bear in mind that for you and me to be mighty in spirit is not to live a perfect trial and trouble-free life. Jesus promises in this world there will be trouble. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but he promises we're not alone and that he'll be with us. Thank you again, Jesus. For us to be mighty in spirit is to face our troubles and trials with faith and hope and the knowledge that when we are weak, as Paul says later on in his epistles, the Lord is strong and mighty to save and to bring life where once it felt there was only death. God works often in strange, mysterious, and miraculous ways for each of us beloved children. If each of us were asked and given time to think about it, we could tell a story of how we had faced a time when we weren't certain how to make a move. We weren't sure what was going to happen next due to some circumstance, and yet we've lived through it and we can look back on it and see how God worked in our circumstance to keep us stable and alive and to bring us through on the other side of that season of difficulty. God works in strange ways, that's sure. Ezekiel, for one, was astounded by the miracle that he witnessed. And he believed the Lord would do as promised. And history shows that God did faithfully return the nation of Judah to the land of its inheritance. Admittedly, when we're in Death Valley, hope may seem very far away and unattainable. But God is always here for us. And God knows the moment when God will breathe new life within our old tired bones thank you god and i say take heart friends just as the victory was near at hand for ezekiel and for the nation of judah god is near to you and near to me as well remember that even when death appears to have laid waste to life as we once knew it just one breath from God can transform you and me and our God breathed life will never be the same again with the hand of the Lord upon us and God's Holy Spirit within us and with renewed hope faith and obedience God is able to accomplish great and wonderful things even helping our tired old dry bones to be filled with new life and to rise up again and again and again. Now will you rise up and join me in singing our closing hymn, which is number 39, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
seated for just a few reminders and through our post loop. I want to thank you all for your service and support of celebration. By showing up, your presence matters. Your participation, your prayers, your generosity, they all make a tremendous difference. It's so good to be able to gather again, whether virtually or here in person. If you have updates on folks on our prayer list, please make us aware in the church office. Tuesday Vespers is at 7.30 p.m., continuing this week on Tuesday. Our summer choir rehearsals are winding down Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. We'll begin our fall rehearsals August 24th at 7 p.m. Save those dates for October 15 and 16, which will be our 20th anniversary weekend celebration. Share pictures from the early days or mid days or current days if you have them. Please be sure to mark them so we can return them to you. Invite your friends to join us for worship on Sundays, either in person or you can introduce them to us through Facebook Live on our church Facebook page. Now hear this charge. Though we may often see ourselves as dry bones, feeling breathless, hopeless, despairing, as good as dead, lying in our graves, 
We need to listen to the prophets among us who continue to hear the absurd call to prophesy to the bones, to proclaim that our self-imposed graves cannot hold us, and that God is, in fact, among us. And God is not only strong, but the God of life and hope forever. Friends, God is strong and loving. So go forth in the Lord and prophesy life and hope to dry bones that you encounter along your way. Now go forth into the world with compassion and justice in your heart. Give voice to the silent and strength to the weak. Hear one another, see one another, care for one another, and love one another. It's all that easy, and it's all that hard. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the powerful presence of the Holy Spirit be with us all both now and forevermore. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen.